Good morning. Reed here, back at Orchestra Farm. Pre morning walkabout. And. Vehicle trying to run past. Oh, yeah, check this out. It's early morning fog happening. Um, hope that's coming through. It's pretty gorgeous. Anyway. <clears throat> Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for liking the video. Really appreciate those little clicks on that button. Appreciate all the comments that have been coming in. And all the, everyone who's clicking the subscription button. That's super fantastic. Great to have you with me on the journey. And, you know, I don't post a lot of stuff about my kids. And every now and then I will share something about them. But parenting is definitely a big part of my life right now. Just to give you an idea, I've got a, they're almost 13, 4, and 2. And, you know, my almost 13 year old is a, one of those dream children, basically. And so, lots of people have said, oh, have more kids, and we did. And, uh, you also get, I get a thing, where people are like, you're a great parent, and I'm like, we'll see. You know, I think that having three of them, and now we've got a boy and a girl for the younger ones. So, I'm excited to see what comes of all that. But, I have noticed some different parents talking about things taking place. So, our almost four-year-old is in a preschool environment a couple days a week for a few hours a day. And we haven't had any trouble in just bringing her by. Uh, she basically runs off to go and play. And there's no clinginess there. And some parents have trouble with that. The kids are very clingy. Okay, I'm just a little bit excited. And this right here is a hickory been growing really slow I put it in shoots four maybe five years ago I can show you the pecan I put it in at the same time I already walked past it but since there there's a, a leafing out josta berry and then a dead apple and right between the two is a single stem going up and that's so a lot bigger and I've heard from different people who have been child care providers and you know the rather clear and obvious thing of like when parents come and the kids are you know clinging to the parent they would shoo the parent out the door and you get maybe like you know five-ish minutes of them complaining and whatever and then you're on to a good day and frankly as a father I get this because the little ones almost always want their mom and they will cry and fuss and whatever for five maybe even ten minutes at the most usually because their mom's leaving and it's best when she just goes and my wife was saying you know children are master manipulators and there's a definite truth to that. And you know, when you're a baby, let's be honest about it, your option for manipulating is crying and fussing. Oh, this is exciting. The blueberry are starting to bud out. Happy about that. And nobody likes to hear their kid cry and fuss. It's terrible. At the same time, since we ought to know that that's the case, sometimes you just got to recognize, like, okay, I'm going to leave now. And if you don't leave in that moment, what you're doing is you're training your child to whine and fuss for you. And that you'll just stay right there like a little security blanket while they whine and fuss. And... If you're like me, and fussing and whining and crying is the last thing that you want to hear your kid do, you 
don't respond to it in the realm of you let them know that that's not how you want to be spoken to and they have to change their intonation they have to change how they're speaking to you and if they can do that then okay maybe i'll stay for another moment but in the case of leaving and clinging and all that i would actually say you're likely just better off saying goodbye and leaving and demonstrating that's how you go now a different friend was chatting with me about planting out some trees apple trees in particular and uh the spiderwebs are gorgeous we get this right now speaking of uh, apple trees can you see the spiderwebs on that it's just lovely they're little strands anyway and she was like hey i could just you know put some irrigation around the tree and it'll live right and i was like yeah it will live but the tree in actuality needs to send its roots down it needs to get down to where the water is and if you keep water near the surface what it does is it sends the roots towards that water and instead of having a healthy tree with roots deep into the soil you get a not quite as healthy tree with its roots near the surface and this actually relates a lot to this whole thing of like the children and leaving we want children we want adults because let's be honest we're raising adults to be able to feel comfortable with other people we want them to feel safe we want them to know themselves enough to be interdependent with not just mom and dad or their siblings so that they can go into the world and be a functional and charismatic member of society now parenting is one of those difficult jobs where we have a lot of feelings wrapped up in it and it takes a lot of self-determination and willpower to kind of keep ourselves a bit out of the mix and that's not to say don't love your children and treat them badly or anything but there's the notion of when they present suffering to us that does not mean that it's real they're just trying to manipulate us and since they're really good at it it's important to know when it's actually just optimal to step away to let them have space to fuss it out to if you're gonna leave your child in the care of someone else for some moments to actually believe that they have your child's best interests at heart and will do their best with the kid. And if you don't have faith in them, well then don't leave your kid there. But, my ponderance is, what in your life are you watering too much? You know, are you listening and feeding into a situation where it would actually be better to just step away from it? I find this even with my creative endeavors when I hear from different people, they agonize over the final details. Maybe that final detail starts at 50%, or in some cases at 20%. They barely even started the process. And other people, it's that last 90%, or, you know, in this case, 10%, that they're mulling over. And they're just feeding it too much. Sometimes it's time to just wipe our hands clean of it, say, I've done what I can. I need to go now. I need to release this to the world. I need to let this thing live on its own. Because whether it's our children or trees or our artistic product projects, they're going to have to fly on their own. They're going to have to grow on their own. They're going to have to do this life on their own. And basically, the earlier in life, once they can communicate, 
for children that is that we can let them go off and do their things the more rapidly they'll develop into the person who can take care of themselves and adjust to the world at large so hope that helps people out there both to release your artistic projects to not overwater your plants to not let the fussing nature of your children I've got to show you this uh, you know wear you down too much and with that thanks for watching thanks for subscribing to the channel let me know any comments you have about this love to hear about them and if you have any other strategies for dealing with children or plants or artistic projects and feeding them and watering them and hearing them out without getting bogged down by everything have too much fun